All right, I think we got everybody. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm John Choi, and I am the Ramsey County Attorney. And with, your, uh, with me today is uh, our Congresswoman, Representative Betty McCollum, our Mayor, Melvin Carter, Council President, uh, St. Paul Council President, Amy Brenmon, and of course, our Chief, uh, Todd Axtell. And today we're here to announce uh, uh, some really excellent um, work uh, from uh, our federal government uh, and through our state, our Congresswoman Betty McCollum, uh, who, who has um, really, uh, I think, delivered on some really important investments that are really needed in this community. One of the things that I think is so critical about uh, having government really work for the people is to have representatives who are truly uh, in alignment with what is going on in our community, representatives who are out there in the community asking leaders, asking the mayor, asking the chief, like, what is it that you need uh, to have a more vibrant, healthy, and safe community? And that's what Representative McCollum uh, did through the work, because uh, now the, the Congress uh, leaders can actually have earmarks in bills. Back, back in the day, they used to have that, but then uh, they stopped doing that, but they realized that there's some value in that conversation with representatives being able to have these conversations and then advocate for them. And it should be no surprise uh, to the people uh, here in the East Metro that our Congresswoman, Betty McCollum, made 10 requests, and all 10 of them uh, ended up in the final bill. And seniority uh, really, really matters for our community. And so we are just so lucky uh, to have um, just you as our representative and the way that you went about seeking out information. And so I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your leadership and also just the, 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 your um, strength of just being able to get it done for us. And these appropriations, we're going to talk about two today. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, mostly about uh, the the appropriation uh, to address uh, violence uh, that's going on in our community. Right away when I, we had a conversation with Representative McCollum through, uh, there's been a, over the past year, uh, Commissioner Carter, who has now joined us, as well as Chief Axtell, Mayor Carter, and Council President Brenron, and others, other leaders in our community, about a year ago we got together and we started uh, realize, as, after we realized and hearing from constituents that we are experiencing an uptick in violence, Right, and that we needed to do something about it. And so through that conversation and that relationship building, one of the things that came, became apparent was is that we needed to seek federal assistance to get more uh, resources so that we could uh, create uh, initiatives that, where we could have police and community working together uh, to develop uh, focused deterrent strategies and to support all of the work that's happening uh, already in our community. And so we made that request to, to Congresswoman McCollum and immediately uh, she knew exactly, because she had already heard from many of her constituents that this was a big concern. And I think the key to um, uh, having public safety and violence reduction is really when leaders are in the room together, working together, helping one another. This is a far different conversation that I had with Representative McCollum as opposed to the conversations that exist right now at their state capitol. Uh, I see a lot of uh, fear mongering that's happening and a, a lot of partisan divide. And instead, Representative McCollum just wanted to know how she could help. And I just so, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate uh, that ability to listen and to just bring people together. So thank you so much, Representative McCollum. So our next speaker is our great mayor from St. Paul, uh, Melvin Carter. Thank you, sir. Good morning, thank you all for being here. Uh, this is uh, an important day for us uh, because these goals are clearly goals that we share. Uh, our commitment to a safe, stable, nurturing community is our highest priority as a community and certainly our highest priority in partnership. I share fo with folks oftentimes that what's more important than who your mayor is uh, and who your congress member is and who your county commissioner is uh, and who your county attorney is is how your mayor, your county attorney, your city council member, and your congress member are working together to help benefit our community. Um, and this is a perfect example of that partnership working very well. Uh, we're working together in St. Paul to implement uh, the most comprehensive, the most coordinated, the most data-driven approach to public safety that our city has ever endeavored. 
That requires those partnerships at all levels of government uh, needed to move this work forward because these community first public safety strategies uh, our community has talked to us about so much aren't a question of either or. It's a question of how we can do literally every single thing we can come up with to keep our residents safe, to keep our communities as safe as humanly possible. We're making targeted investments in youth jobs, in violence intervention, and alternative response mechanisms, and other preventative strategies to improve public safety outcomes in our neighborhoods. Um, and Congressmember McCollum's work to secure these grants for us will provide us with the funding to complete the replacement of nearly 1,300 end-of-life handheld and vehicle-mounted radios that St. Paul's officers, firefighters, and paramedics rely on to maintain life safety while serving our residents every single day. It's obviously a vital tool in our public safety toolbox. Um, it'll be braided with other federal and local dollars to achieve the goals of St. Paul's $6.7 million citywide first responder uh, radio upgrade project, and we're very excited for the opportunity to pursue a violence prevention, uh, this violence prevention work uh, alongside our partners at the county, alongside our partners in community to ensure that we, and this is our, this is our commitment, that we, are, that we go beyond uh, first class, high quality, immediate response after a crime has occurred to all of the types of proactive interventions and investments that we can make as a community to reduce the likelihood that terrible things will occur in our community in the first place. I want to specifically lift up the work of our executive project lead for redevelopment, Melanie McMahon, Human Rights and Equal Economic uh, Opportunity, uh, Direct, Deputy Director Andrea Ledger, Assistant City Attorney Shaban Tolar, and Emergency Management Director Rick Shute uh, for their dedicated work in partnership with uh, Congressmember McCollum's office to help make this happen. I echo all of the words that our county attorney just said about the importance of this partnership and about our delight that this partnership is working together for St. Paul residents, for Ramsey County residents, for District 4 residents, as well as it is. Thank you very much. Chief Baxter. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's a, it, it's a great day in, in St. Paul. And I'll, I'll tell you this, not only as the chief of police in this city, but uh, as, as someone who is a citizen that uh, you represent me, I appreciate the incredible work that you do day in and day out. I look at the last 21 years of your service as as a congresswoman in our country, you've truly had boots on the ground. I see you in the restaurants, I see you in the community, I see you connecting with our community advocates, I see you connecting with our police officers, and uh, not only you hear us, you listen. And as a result of that listening, you have brought forth some significant investments that will help the St. Paul Police Department to protect the peace and maintain public safety in a significant way. As uh, Mayor Carter had mentioned, our radios have been end of life now for a couple of years, which means we can't fix them. We had to pre-order pre some extra parts because Motorola simply didn't uh, support fixing those radios. So uh, thanks to your significant support at the federal level, our officers now have the latest and greatest technology to help us in those times of emergency. And during emergencies, every second counts. It truly does. So thank you for that. And um, I'd also like to uh, thank Mayor Carter, Commissioner Carter, Council President Brent Mullen, John Choi, County Attorney, for your continued and ongoing support. Also, the COPS grant came in at a federal, uh, at a federal level. Um, Mayor, thank you very much for your support and bringing those extra dollars. And, and uh, uh, Congresswoman, thank you very much for your support in that regard that will help the city of St. Paul, St. Paul maintain the uh, 619 officers on the street year round. So um, as we say, the cavalry is coming in a good way and our police officers aren't out there just to arrest our way out of situations. They're, they're there to help protect uh, victims of crime, to process crime scenes, to engage our community, to build the trust, which is so critically important. And I think about Congresswoman McCollum's work to uh, help reduce recidivism by expanding services for people re-entering our society 
who have paid their debt to society to try to bring back that dignity and hope. Uh, it's a very important piece of the criminal justice system. And uh, every day we, we appreciate your support. And uh, we know, as Mayor Carter says all the time, that, that public safety isn't the police alone. We can't do it alone. It's our elected officials. It's our prosecutors. It's, it's not just the St. Paul uh, people of St. Paul. We can't do it alone. But collectively, we can protect the peace and maintain public safety in our community. And that's what these radios really help us do. So thank you for that. I'll uh, be for, here for any questions that you have. Thank you. Next, we have Representative McCullough. Well, communication is the key, and that's why the radios are so important. You know, I uh, started out uh, as, as a city council member, and uh, so I really appreciate and working with our city councils throughout the 4th Congressional District, uh, especially the St. Paul City Council, which is the, the capital city and has a lot of extra added responsibilities go with it when, you, when you're the seat of government for Ramsey County. I've appreciated over the years working with uh, Commissioner Carter, School Board Member Carter, and all the things that we have tried to do with youth grants uh, to have summer employment opportunities, after school opp opportunities, some of the early work that we did in recidivism and we saw with, with the program, that ACES program that Ramsey County had, we, we watched the recidivism change. And then we went through the recession and with the recession came, came tough choices and cuts that uh, we had no idea could possibly impact some of the gains that we had made in our community, especially with our youth. And so it, it was an honor and a privilege when we were able to back, they're, they're called uh, district community uh, grants, right? You hear from your community, you hear from the leaders in your community and the community leaders who work with us, the nonprofits, the churches, the mosques, the synagogues that we all work with, with some of their priorities. So if we're gonna have a strong uh, East Metro, uh, we need to have strong neighborhoods. We need to have neighborhoods that are safe. We need to have young people who feel engaged, appreciated, and see opportunities for them. Um, and so we wanna reinforce all that positive behavior that we know is in them, that we know that they wanna, they wanna be engaged in. And that means you know we still have work to do with summer employment, um, after school opportunities, and making um, young adults realize that four years of college might not be what's there for you, but a great job in the building trades could be just you know hands-on work doing it. So we have a lot of work to do that. But in order to get there, that means we have to be partners. So um, we have to use all our tools in our toolbox. We, the city council uses its tools. The county uses the tools that it has available for public health, the city for you know, rec programs. But to the heart of that, when there's a 911 call, it's to police, fire, and EMS. And they have to have the tools that they, knew, that, that they need to get there to be on the job and do it on time. And uh, I remember when we did the first replenishment of radios, I knew they weren't gonna last forever. That's a big ticket item, folks. And when you're looking at that ticket item, the mayor and the council and in, in the county with, with its, its first response uh, roles sometimes have to look at cutting other things. So I wanna thank Ramsey County and the city of St. Paul for engaging with my office. You know, um, I, 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 we talked about my seniority and I appreciate that, but I'm not going anywhere, but chief, um, you are bringing a close to all the great years that you have served the city and we look forward to your continued mentorship and leadership and community engagement in the years, years ahead. Um, so we need to police with compassion. We need to reach our youth to provide opportunity and we have to work together as a team to deliver for all the people, all the people who put their trust in us to lead this community. With that, I thank you. So I think any questions for any one of us? Uh, can you give me some details on the crime prevention effort and you know, what, are, what exactly you want to provide? Yeah, so um, uh, like I said before, uh, a year ago, um, we started a group called the Violence Reduction Leadership Group, and it comprises of a number of people that are up here today as well as other uh, leaders in law enforcement. And as a part of that conversation, we made this request uh, to Representative McCollum uh, both Commissioner Carter and I wrote a letter uh, in support of an appropriation. So as the conversations that we've had in, the, in our violence reduction leadership group, one of the strategies uh, 
uh, that we want to ensure uh, is going to be working properly is our work around focused deterrence. Focused deterrence is a, a, st a strategy around group violence, and we believe that there's a applicability uh, to utilize that type of strategy for shots fired as well as carjacking. And we will be the first, uh, we are actually the first community <coughs> in the nation to actually try to use uh, that focused deterrence model uh, through um, uh, the National Network for Safe Communities or for uh, carjacking. And that's something that we've been experiencing here uh, in the East Metro as well as across the Twin Cities area as well. So what this uh, $900,000 will do, the first part of it, ne we need to own up to the, the financial commitments that we have for the technical assistance to pay for uh, the national network to be involved. They've already started that work because of a very generous grant uh, through every town uh, for uh, gun safety. They have provided some resources for our community so that the national network could get started. And we had our uh, launch or GVI University back in, I think it was November, December of this past year. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of the, the work, and there's a lot of different kinds of initiatives, but they're all working on intervention prevention through the county, through the city, and this is an opportunity through our violence reduction leadership group to get some technical assistance, to bring it all together so that it's coordinated. That's the most important piece of it. We've always said that the most important thing is that it's all hands on deck, right? It's not a either or it's an and when it comes to violence reduction. So that's what we're really committed to. So the first, f first portion of that $900,000 will go to pay off that technical assistance that we've already secured and we've already started. And then the latter half of uh, the appropriation will help us invest in community so that they can work alongside our police. Our whole hope is that by community and police working together on strategies that we can all support around intervention and prevention, that that's gonna make a difference. And, and keep in mind that focused deterrence truly is the only evidence-based uh, program to reduce violence in this country. It's the only one that's ever been proven to be successful. It's happened all over the country and we believe that it can happen here uh, in St. Paul as well as uh, around carjackings as well. Yeah, I mean, I think Minneapolis has already undertaken a lot of uh, violence reduction strategies. So in a way, we've already done that too, but this is an, an effort to really bolster uh, that, those community investments. Uh, we have a number of grants. Well, I think those are conversations that uh, we have to first figure out who's gonna procure that. So I, if it's the county or the city, uh, but we're, you know, that's a part of a conversation that we'll have through the violence reduction leadership group. But the first thing is we've got to pay for the technical assistance that we've already started. And then the second piece of that is to figure out exactly how best to deploy that uh, resource uh, and invest in our community to work with our police uh, to combat violence.